You did such a great job in this movie. My God, what a suspense. It was amazing. And I love these kind of films. And I'm wondering when you were younger, do you remember going to the theater and seeing, you know, scary films like this? Well, yeah, that's the whole cool thing when you're seven years old and, you, you know, you walk into this movie theater and you think, what would I do? Would I stay and, you know, wait to be saved? Or would I be one of the people who crawl out and you kind of relate to that little boy and what he's going through? And, and then, you know, working with Jimmy Bennett and being in that situation to watch this child basically, you know, be on the other side of the wall and, and have to you know, and have to deal with what we were all dealing with, which was the intensity of the water and the fire and the filmmaking. And, you know, there are moments where all of us panicked, much less this little boy who basically was just so extraordinary in his, in his you know, like you say, being a, little, a child and being able to relate to it. I think anyone can relate to these situations that way. Yeah. You get off uh, the glass menagerie, you're off doing theater, you know, and it's a completely different environment. You plunge, no, no pun intended, into this. Mm -hmm. You read the script, you know what you're getting into, but did you really know what you were getting into? You know, I don't know that anyone can be prepared for what it is to deal with water. I mean, it's the same way you can't be prepared to deal with what Mother Nature's going to throw at you. Even though we are on a contained stage that you know as they're trying to make it as safe as possible Wolfgang's whole idea was I want to put real situ real people in this situation I don't want to see stunt doubles and I don't want to see computer images and so I'm gonna throw things at you that are um, you know in the case my case ended up making me hospitalized twice because they were so intense and so physically viscerally challenging um, that you know <laughs> that I bled for them yeah I mean I was gonna say you you tore your thumb real bad you almost lost an eye for God's sake I mean you know it's great that you do these things for sure. your craft sure. but uh, I guess you know the, the, I think the question is what kind of movie are you trying to make are you trying to make something that I, I think the audiences are very smart these days and they can tell you know look that's a cut there's the there's the stunt devil there's the computer creating this guy's face you know and it's just it becomes it becomes something that I think people are a little bit tired of to be honest with you and Wolfgang I think is a smart enough director as well to respect the audience and say look you gotta go through this and, and I kinda of like that challenge too and sometimes it would be um, a little bit more surreal than I imagined you know when they actually light sixty feet of water on fire and you're underneath it looking up thinking I, I gotta get to the oxygen swim man swim now <laughs> Um, and and it was a crazy thing to prepare for and train for every day. So how long can you hold your breath for? You know, I got to 211, <laughs> and the reason why I got there was because Jimmy Bennett, the little boy in the beginning, could beat me, and I was just <laughs> enraged by that. And so he and I would sit there with a stopwatch and time each other. Wow. Uh, but yeah, he, 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 we had fun that way. Now, of course, you're working with you know the master director who knows a little bit about water and mm -hmm. boats. <laughs> I mean, wow, this mm -hmm. guy is phenomenal. What really impressed you? Uh, you've worked with a lot of really good directors. This thing is very different because he... He says, he has this idea that I think comes from Making Dust Boat where he says, um, you know, I, I, he had a real U-boat commander talk to him about what it is to command men and be a leader of men and be a leader of men inside of a situation that they might die. Not that we're necessarily going to die on, on the making of Poseidon, but there were moments that were extremely physically dangerous and intense. And what Wolfgang brings to it is this massive sense of joy and passion and confidence and he does it in a way that makes you consistently feel like you're being respected and admired and that it's playful. And so even though you come out of the water, I mean, I came out of the water at one point thinking I was going to drown and screaming at Wolfgang, literally saying, you know, that's it, I can't take it anymore. Somehow his own personal sense of, of playfulness um, makes you immediately go, yeah, let's do it again, and jump right back into the water. It's a, it's a really interesting talent that he has. Maybe it's manipulation, <laughs> um, but it's, it's, he's a very, um, I always call him like a childlike grandfather. It's this wonderful mix of the two things at once, and, yeah. and uh, he was just, he at his core is respectful. Now tremendously. he thinks very very highly of you. I mean, calling you a young Paul Newman, and we're not just talking the eyes, my friend. I mean, how do you feel when you hear that? Look, Newman to me is the the great honor to be compared to of anyone. Um, uh, mainly, obviously, because he's a remarkably great actor, but also because of what he's done in so many other ways. You know, and the fact that. I, I met him and spent time with him and, and actually got to play a young version of him in a movie that he was in and he, you know, the thing about Newman is he says, you know, don't take yourself seriously but take the work seriously and, and the work for him is about charity, about, you know, having an impact, uh, about movies, about family, about so many different things that he's just an extraordinary, extraordinary person and, you know, comparison is, is the ultimate honor to yeah. him at least. Well, good on you, because yeah, like I say, you do a great job in all, in all the films that you do. Um, this cast, wow, what a great 
great cast, eclectic group of people, yeah, you know, really, really, you know, how do you bond? It must be a different type of bonding than other films because of the situations that you're in. Look, you're right, it's an eclectic group of actors, but it's also one of the things that I think is effective about the storytelling is that these people, they don't know each other, you know, they're in a situation where, and, and we all talked about this too, that they're not going to take the time to get to know each other, and if anything, they're going to desperately try and help each other survive the experience. Poseidon, the making of the movie, had a sort of similar oddity to it, where had we had bad eggs in, in the cast, it would have been a very unpleasant experience because it was physically so challenging. And so it became about, you know, everyone, you know, Mike Vogel, I'd watch him go ask a question of, of Kurt or Richard about, you know, about their careers and surviving the things that they've been through and what he was being challenged by in the making of this movie. And each one of us would have these kind of wonderful, interesting conversations about how we've done it differently or or what we can do to help each other through what ostensibly was something that was, you know, deeply, deeply challenging. I mean, everyone was sick, everyone was hurt, everyone was just uh, exhausted on a level that, you know, when you have Richard Dreyfuss and Kurt Russell say it's the hardest movie they've ever made, yeah. <laughs> you know you're making a pretty hard movie. Yeah. Uh, Wolfgang, I know he uh, served soup every day on the set, 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite? Soup. Without a doubt, the seafood bisque. Um, but you know, then sometimes I would, I, I thought Wolfgang was a rather benevolent judge of the soup, and sometimes I would be a little frustrated because I think, you know, I, I, I would have been much harsher. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of a beautiful thing that happens where he, again, what Wolfgang is so unique about is he brings the whole group, hundreds of people together at the exact same time every morning, and uh, there's this moment of, you know, handing out these soups and everyone having a moment of talking and having coffee and soup together and then waiting for the judgment of, of our leader. <laughs> um, and he's rather rather sweet about it, that's yeah. for sure. Um, I love seeing you play bad guys. Now, in this one, as you say, you don't really get to develop the character that much. It's, mm. You've just got to survive. Just get but through it. do you have way more fun being the baddie? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you get to deal with, you know, the dark parts of your personality or, or the sort of, you know, the madness, the, 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 the aggression, all the different things. The, the, bad, the bad characters are always the most fun to watch, too. I mean, the villains are... Villains are what drives films oftentimes. Um, so, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So, what are we going to see from you next? You know, I'm, I'm uh, part of this documentary that Ken Burns has made about the war, World War II, um, which to me is just a totally remarkable um, feat of 14 hour documentary filmmaking uh, brilliance, honestly. And so, yeah. Well, good I'm most stuff. Proud of. Well, yeah. keep it up, and uh, I'm, you know, I know we'll see you again real cool. soon. Cool. Great.